Uh, ben Carson uh, appeared with uh, Chuck Todd, and I, I've lost all respect for uh, Ben Carson because uh, uh, he sold himself out. Now, I don't know what he sold out for, but he damn sure sold out for something because uh, Donald Trump is the antithesis of Ben Carson. So um, now, and he's, he's supporting him now. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. So he, in my opinion, he, he, he's getting something or he's going to get something, even though he's going to uh, deny it for legal reasons. Former Republican presidential candidate and now a Donald Trump supporter, Dr. Carson. Nice to talk with you. Good morning, sir. Happy April Fool's Day. Good morning. <laughs> Same to you, Chuck. Yeah. So, I mean, you're here to announce your candidacy. You're getting back in the race, right, April Fool? <laughs> yeah, that would be an April Fool's joke. Let me, let me ask you this. Is, is Donald Trump working hard enough to become president? Is he studying hard enough? You're, you're an academic uh, as much as you were a practitioner. You couldn't have become a great practitioner without studying your craft. There are many Trump supporters who tell me they're concerned that Donald Trump doesn't study enough. What say you? Uh, I don't know that you can ever study enough, to be honest with you, uh, no matter who you are. Uh, there's so much to know and so many new things to learn, so many things to consider, uh, so many complicated relationships. So uh, absolutely, everybody uh, should be working much harder to learn much more because it's a very complex world. And How also, we him to do it, though? as a How population. Convince, How do you convince him to do it? Because it hasn't been, he hasn't done it so far. Uh, I, I believe he's working on it. I, I think you're, uh, actually, if, if you objectively go back and look, he is starting to talk a little bit more about policy. Uh, and I think you're going to continue to see that, you know, in the future. But I think it, it's not just Donald Trump. You know, it's, it's been my beef the whole time when I was running. Nobody wanted to talk about policy. They just, uh, including you guys in the media, just wanted to talk about, you know, this person said this about you and this person said this about your mama. You know, wh when, when are we going to mature to the point where we actually focus on those issues? Well, wait a minute, Dr. And Carson, you're, you're on here. Well, well, wait a minute, you're on here as a surrogate for Donald Trump and you're complaining about the fact that you know, your mama said this, your mama. There are a lot of people going to hear you say that and say, it's your candidate that has taken this conversation to this low road that you're complaining about. Yeah, but, you know, he can't do that by himself. Other people have to join in. And my point being that we as a nation, all of us, need to understand that we need to move to a different level. The problems that we face and that the future generations face are very significant, much beyond the, the kind of chatter that we're getting into here. Let me ask you about this uh, issue with women in Wisconsin right now. It's not, it's, we see nationally, the unfavorable ratings for, for Donald Trump are in the 70s. Uh, and, and in Wisconsin, I've seen one poll that had his unfavorable rating among all women, I think it's 76 percent. Uh, this wasn't a good week for Donald Trump in communicating with, with some women voters. Uh, the arrest uh, of, of his campaign manager uh, for, for, uh, for assaulting a woman, a misdemeanor charge on that. Then the comments on abortion saying he should, women should be punished. I know he walked it back. What does he do to fix this? What would you recommend? I, I would recommend, you know, just talking frankly about it. Uh, you know, in terms of the abortion issue, uh, he needs to go back, his people need to go back and talk about some of the things that he said before that demonstrate that, you know, his real opinion is what he said it was. See, the problem with that is if you go back, you'll see that he was pro-abortion. So that that in itself doesn't work. But I, I know from experience that sometimes in the heat of a conversation, you say things that you wish you hadn't said mm -hmm. um, and you walk them back. Uh, he did do that. That should be comforting to some people who say that Donald Trump is a wild man and, you know, he will never listen to anybody. Obviously, he did listen to other people. He did realize that he had made a mistake and he corrected it. I, I think that's better than somebody who makes the mistake and then doubles down and triples down on it. What, uh, what type of jobs has Donald Trump talked to you about uh, in a Trump administration? 
What type of positions? Has he talked to you about being running mate? Has he talked to you about other positions? We, we haven't talked about any uh, specific positions. What we have talked about... Aha! Uh -huh. So they haven't talked about any specific positions. So that means they, they've talked about uh, some positions uh, in a general sense. I, I know that the, that Trump offered this guy something. We just don't know. We won't know what it is unless uh, Trump gets uh, gets in there and I guess gets the position, which I I hope we never have to find out what he offered uh, Carson unless Carson writes another book. Is the fact that we both have a strong desire to heal this country and to preserve it for the next generation and that we would work together uh, to help that happen. You know, the, it, it's a false narrative that I'm seeking some type of position. I don't need a position. You know, I already have a platform. I've had a platform for many years, long before I got into this. And, you know, working in ways to get kids educated. But do you have a desire to work? Reading. I'm going to continue to do that. Do you have a I desire to work in a Trump have a administration? Desire to work in the government. Not, not no, at all. I don't. There, is there, if, I, if he did do ask you to such work, a desire. I understand that. But if he asked you, you would serve for him? It really kind of depends on the situation. It, uh, okay, so the so translation, uh, yeah, if he asked me uh, to take a spot, yeah, I'll take it. So Carson full of shit. Again, I must emphasize, it is not what I'm looking for. After what I've been through the last couple of years, are you kidding me? <laughs> you, want a little, you want a little rest, I, I imagine, given the campaign show. Let me ask you one final question. The meeting at the RNC yesterday with the Trump campaign, do, do you believe the RNC has been a fair arbiter in this process, both when you were a candidate and now that you are a Trump supporter. Do you think the RNC has been fair uh, about the process? I think they think they're fair, but no, I don't think so. I think they uh, try to pick and choose uh, who the candidate should be, and they you know, focus attention and help to certain people, other people they try to ignore. Um, but the important thing is, the people and the RNC and everybody, the DNC, everybody needs to recognize that this country was built around the will of the people. And all of these pundits and, mm -hmm. and you know, big time political people need to stop for a moment and say, do we really care about what the people want? Are you concerned that if Donald Trump doesn't get in on the first ballot that the RNC will do whatever it takes to stop him? I think they will be thinking that way, but hopefully between now and then they will come to understand that if they try to undermine the will of the people, they mm -hmm. will have not only destroyed their party, but they will fundamentally change the United States of America. Well, see, Ben Carson is not really a Republican, because if you notice what he just said, he just said that they will destroy their party, not that they will destroy our party. So words, words ha have consequence. So, uh, again, Ben Carson uh, needs to learn how to open up his eyes so he doesn't always look like he's sleeping when he's talking to people. In those words, I'll leave it there. Dr. Ben Carson joining us from Palm Beach Garden, Florida. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.